The purpose of this video is to instruct nursing staff on how to safely get a patient out of bed and mobilized on the nursing unit. I am a physical therapist, this is a nurse and a patient, and together we're going to show you in a step-by-step -step process how to do this safely. It's very important that the first time the patient gets out of bed, it's with two people, and preferably one of them needs to be an RN. There's a certain amount of clinical assessment that needs to happen, and really the RN should be the person to do that. Once the um, patient has been up and about, then two CNAs can certainly get the patient up. And there's a couple of things that you need to know before you go into the patient's room. You need to know the patient's diagnosis, and if they've had a surgery, which side their surgery is on. You need to know if they have any kind of weight-bearing restrictions, any kind of precautions, such as they've had a hip replacement, and do they have anterior or posterior precautions? Or if they've had spinal surgery, do they have spinal precautions? Once you know those things, you are ready to go into the room and establish that the patient is able to follow at least one-step commands. If the patient's very confused, they will not be able to work with us, and they may, in fact, fight us. And also that the patient's pain is controlled. If the patient's pain is not controlled, we need to go get pain medicine, medicate the patient, and come back a little later when the pain is better controlled and the patient will be able to work with us. So good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Can you tell me your first name? Jennifer. And do you know where you are, Jennifer? In the hospital. Okay. So the patient is alert, knows where she is, knows her own name, and is able to follow at least one-step commands. How is your pain right now? Okay. Could you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? It's a 4 out of 10. It's a 4. So 4 means it's reasonably well controlled, so this is a good time to get up and mobilize. Yes. So let's do that. Before I get Jennifer up, I do want to assess her strength, especially in her upper extremities while she's lying down, because this is going to tell me if she has enough strength in her arms to help us as we go to bring her into the sitting position. I'm going to have you lift your arm and hold it for about a count of 5. And after five seconds, you can have her lower it. Very nice. You can put this arm down, and I want you to lift your right arm and hold it against gravity for five seconds and relax. So because she is able to hold her arm up against gravity for five seconds, this tells me that she is going to be able to help us as we go to bring her up. Okay, so let's start to get you up. Now, the focus of this video is to use the bed and other equipment, such as a walker and a gait belt, to help us so that it's about putting the patient in the best position with the right equipment to be able to mobilize, not about us really having to haul her out of bed, okay? Because Julie and I are both quite tall, the first thing we are going to do is raise the height of the bed in order to protect our backs as we lean over the patient to help her. Okay. So let's do this very systematically. We're going to have you move your left leg first, and you're going to bring it out towards the edge of the bed. We're going to assume that Jennifer's right leg is her surgical leg or weaker leg, so I'm going to give that leg a little help. And now I want you to move your shoulders over towards Julie. You're going to move this leg off the bed. You're going to bring this leg out to the side. I'm going to give you a little help and move your shoulders over. I am going to use the bed controls again to just help her come up a little higher. And right about here, you can start to use your arms and scoot yourself out towards the edge of the bed. And Julie and I both have our hands on her scapula, and that allows us to really help her come forward and give her some support to her trunk. Once she's seated, this is where the first assessment needs to take place. She's had a change in position from lying to sitting, and so we want to make sure that that hasn't caused her any distress. So are you dizzy at all? No. So I, we're looking for dizziness, um, any kind of sweaty, um, uh, any kind of diaphoresis, um, or if, if she's in any way distressed, if her breathing has changed. She's saying she's fine, so we will progress. If she said she was having issues, we would go ahead and take vitals and then determine if this was a good time to continue. I'm going to lower the bed to bring her feet down towards the floor. And then once she's got her feet on the floor, we're going to assess her lower extremity strength and make sure the same way that we assessed her arm strength that her legs are strong enough when she goes to stand up. So I'm going to have you kick this leg out, hold again for five seconds, and relax, and do the same with your right leg. Kick out, hold for five seconds, and relax. 
Because Jennifer can hold her leg against gravity for five seconds, this tells me that her quadriceps muscle on the front of her thigh is strong enough to hold her up when she stands. If she was unable to do this, the likelihood is that she would buckle when she went to put weight on her legs. And she would need really a physical therapy consult at that point to work on strengthening that muscle. Because she's able to do it, we are going to progress to getting up. The first thing we're going to have her do is actually scoot her bottom out to the edge of the bed. If Jennifer was unable to do that herself, Julie and I would use the chuck that she's seated on and would actually lift her bottom on the chuck. Once she's in this position, we're going to use again the bed controls to elevate the bed as high as we can, still keeping her feet in contact with the floor. Jennifer's pretty tall, so we can go up pretty high. Great. By elevating the bed, she is going to have to put out a lot less effort than if she's trying to stand up from a low surface, which means that Julie and I will have to put out a lot less effort to actually help her into the standing position. And this is where the bed can really help us. We are going to use a gait belt and a walker. Um, I, as a physical therapist, put a walker in front of everybody that I get up for the first time. Um, it really, I feel, provides a sense of confidence to the patient, especially the elderly patient, and allows them to really hold on to something that's very sturdy and consequently put out a lot more effort for me as they go to stand up. If I try to stand them without the walker, they're more than likely going to pull away from me, which, which creates an unsafe uh, situation. I use a gait belt with everybody, and it really does provide the opportunity for me to control their center of gravity and to keep them balanced if they start to lose their balance at all. So we're going to put the belt around Jennifer's waist. And we want it snug enough that it's going to allow us to have good control without riding up her body, but not so snug that it's going to actually be uncomfortable. You want to be able to fit about two fingers inside the belt. I'm going to just tuck this in so it's out of our way. If Jennifer had a colostomy bag, or any kind of tube, a G-tube or a peg tube, or if she'd had a major abdominal surgery, I would not place the belt right here. I would put the belt right here under her arms, but above her chest, so that would still give me the ability to control um, and still allow me to help her, but wouldn't put any pressure on her abdomen. We're also going to use a walker. I'm going to put the walker in front of Jennifer. Now, for demonstration purposes, we are going to have Jennifer stand up to look at the height of the walker. And a walker is the right height for the patient if when they stand and they have their hands down by their side, the handle of the walker is right at the crease of their wrist. And so this walker is perfect for Jennifer. If the walker was too short or too tall, it would need to be adjusted in order to be safe and in order for the patient to be able to get the maximum use out of the walker. So we're going to have you sit back down, Jennifer, and we're going to talk through how to stand the patient up. So we want the walker nice and close, and we're going to have Jennifer put one hand on the walker, but she's going to keep the other hand on the bed to allow her to push from the surface she's sitting on, which is going to give her the best leverage to stand up. So you are going to give a big, big push with both arms and stand yourself up, and now place the hand on the walker. Once Jennifer is standing, we are going to look at um, the sequencing that if she had, we had talked earlier about her right leg being her affected leg, so if she'd had a surgery on her right lower extremity, the sequencing would be this. She would push the walker out in front of her, she'd move her right leg, she'd transfer her weight down through her arms, and then move her left. So it's walker, right leg, push on your hands, and then left. One more time. Okay, let's back up actually, so you can just back up. And you can go ahead and stand for one second. If the patient was not an orthopedic patient, she was a medical patient, she had pneumonia or UTI or some medical diagnosis, but did not have a leg that was weaker or an operated leg, we would just cue her to push the walker like she would push a shopping cart and then to walk behind it. So you're just going to push the walker and walk gently behind it. Very nice. We hope that this video makes nursing staff feel more comfortable about mobilizing patients while they're in the hospital. Every patient does not need physical therapy, but every patient needs to be mobilized, and mobility is everyone's responsibility.